Hey everyone, we're back and in today's video, I'm gonna give you some tips to instantly improve your portrait photography. I also wanna say a huge thanks to Cascable for sponsoring today's video. I have people ask me all the time how I take such beautiful portraits. And so I thought I would tell you some tips or things I do before and during a photo shoot to make sure I get good looking photos every time. First, before anything, one of the biggest tips I have for you is to plan the shoot. Sounds simple enough, but many people actually get this step wrong. Wrong. This is the most crucial part of the shoot to make sure it goes perfect for both you and the model. When I was first starting out, I would tell my model to meet at a general area and then we would walk around until we found a good location. Now, there's nothing wrong with this if you're shooting with a friend or you both have nothing to do in the day, but if you only have an hour for a shoot and the model or client is paying you, you should have locations already planned. So for example, if I knew that I wanted to shoot in Yorkville, which I think is such a beautiful area of Toronto, I would head into Google Maps, drop a point in Yorkville, and just spend some time going up and down random streets finding spots that may look cool. Because the street view could be out of date, I then physically go there to check out those spots. While planning locations, you should also consider the weather and time of day because these will both significantly affect the look of your photos. Most people like shooting during golden hour because that's when the light is very soft, there's no harsh shadows, and overall it brings a lot of color into your image. If you're shooting midday with the sun directly above you and there's no clouds, then you're gonna have a lot of harsher shadows. So it's important to choose which time of day you're gonna be shooting at. Within the planning process, you also have things like what outfit is my model going to wear? Will it match the location? Poses, do I know poses or should I study some before the shoot? So for me personally, I like to use Pinterest to study or find poses before a photo shoot. And basically what I do is search up portrait photo shoot or fashion photo shoot and look at the different poses these models are doing. If I do find a pose that I want to try for this photo shoot or that I think looks good, then I can save it to a collection and you know save it for later for different photo shoots down the road. For every photo shoot, this is basically what goes into my planning phase. My next tip is to pick the right focal length. Are you going for a wider look to capture some environment in your shot or do you want a tighter look? I tend to shoot all my portraits with a 35 millimeter which is wide but not too wide I'm actually filming this video on 35 millimeter I just think it suits my style more and it's definitely my preferred focal length if we take a look at this comparison, you can see that at 35 millimeters, you can really see a lot more of the background, even though it was probably shot at the same aperture. And that's because with a longer focal length, you get more compression, which in simple terms makes it look even blurrier. 50 millimeters is obviously a little bit more tighter and 85 millimeters is even tighter, not really getting much environment or surroundings in your shot. After you've decided on your lens of choice and you're ready to start shooting, one of the things I like to do is search for light. What you want to be doing here is to have your model stand or sit wherever you want it to take the shot and have them rotate 360 degrees while you watch for the best lighting. Basically what I'm looking for here is good saturation in my model skin and no harsh shadows unless that's the look I'm going for. As important as it is to get your model to do a 360 to find the light, you yourself should also be looking at your surroundings to find other photo opportunities. You may think that this one spot you were shooting at is good, but if you shot Maybe just the other way around, it could be even better. Which sort of ties into my next tip, and that's to incorporate movement. Depending on the shoot and the look you're going for, have your model continue moving. This way, you get more fluid and natural poses. However, you yourself want to be moving all the time as well. Shoot from further back, shoot up close, shoot at a higher angle, shoot low. That way you get a variety of different shots. This is good for your client because they're not receiving 20 photos that are all the same, but it's also good for you because that means you have more photos that are different that you can use for your portfolio. Also, don't be afraid to get close to your model unless she's uncomfortable. Some of my best photos were taken two to three feet away from my model. Next tip is to communicate with your model, or I guess, how you communicate with your model. Build up a rapport with them, ask some questions, make them laugh, and get to know a little more about them. Kind of like if you were hanging out with your friend. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I do it during 
Yeah. This will not only make the shoot less tense, but will also allow both you and the model to feel more comfortable, which makes for better photos. One of the biggest mistakes I see beginner photographers make is directing the model the entire shoot. You can see that the model is just itching to do her own thing and she's trying to get into that flow and the photographer just won't shut up. Direct a little less, let the model do her own thing and give them poses when you think they're running out. These will all make for better looking photos and more natural looking poses. Now obviously this all depends on who you're working with of course. If you're shooting with someone who is brand new to modeling then maybe direct a little more. I have a few more tips for you but really quickly I'm going to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Cascable and how I've been using Cascable to improve my photography. Cascable is a super powerful tool for photographers that allows them to unlock their camera's full potential. It works with almost every camera manufacturer, can be used completely wirelessly or wired and takes no time to set up. Only have a camera with one SD card slot and you're constantly worried about losing those photos, all you have to do is create a storage link between your camera's SD card and another storage location like iCloud or a hard drive and watch your raw photos get saved to both devices in real time while you're shooting, essentially giving you two SD card slots. Shooting real estate photos? Use Cascable's recipe editor to take three photos at different exposures to get an HDR photo with only one click of a button. The best part is that you only have to make this recipe once, save it and run it at the next house you're shooting. There's no need to adjust settings for every shot and every room, saving you time and making you more money. I like to use Cascable when I'm shooting studio portraits because I can use the iPad to tether my camera and show the model what the photos look like in real time. While tethering, I also have a storage link set up to store my photos to my Samsung SSD because the EOS R only has capacity for one SD card. This ensures that if anything happens to the card, I still have the photos for my client. Those are just some of the powerful things you can do with Cascable, but there's so much more. You also have Live View, great for self-portraits, geotagging, shutter robot, built-in calculators, and more. Cascable is a free app on the Apple Store, but to get access to some of these features, you do need to upgrade to their Pro version, which is super affordable. So head to the description to try out Cascable today. The next tip is to show your model the photos and give feedback. This is a good way for them to see the photos beforehand and pick out ones they like, but it's also a good way to see where they could improve. I've had models look at the photos and say, can we retry this pose because they looked awkward and almost always we'll get a shot that was better than the other one. You need to make sure you're giving feedback to your model and continue to hype them up throughout the entire photo shoot. You're killing it, these are coming out great, you're stunning, things like that will get your model feeling more confident and again make the photos look 10 times better. There's also nothing worse than a shoot where nobody is talking and there's no music playing, it's just so awkward. So don't make them awkward and talk to your model. And lastly, probably the number one tip that will improve any photography you're doing is knowing the fundamentals of your camera. This is another one that I find a lot of beginners skip over and just choose to shoot in automatic, which won't get you the best photos. Understanding what aperture does, shutter speed, ISO, different focus methods, focal lengths, and how they all affect your photos will help you so much. Knowing how to control all these will allow you to enter any situation, whether you're shooting midday or in the evening and still be able to get amazing shots. You don't want to be stopping your model to adjust your settings so you should also know how to adjust all your settings on the fly. With these tips I hope you get out there and use them at your next shoot. Make sure to leave a like on this video, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this and hit that bell to be notified when I post a new video. Thanks again Cascable for sponsoring today's video and I'll see you all in the next one.